C.S. Lewis said, courage is not simply one of the virtues, but the form of every virtue at its testing point, which means at the point of highest reality. Today, I want to tell you a story, a story about courage. We will look at two women from the Bible named Pua and Shifra. They were tested to stand up for what God says over what man says. These are two biblical women that you can follow to understand how to have courage to face anyone, how to stand up for what is right regardless of the consequences, and how to make a bigger impact in your business. If you're ready to make that bigger impact for God with your business, you want more courage to do just that, and you need help, you need to be inspired by those who have come before, then join me. Hey there, wise woman. This is Deneen TV, your Christian business growth strategist and clarity coach. Thank you so much for being here. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, especially if you're enjoying the content here. So I want to talk about these two women who are mentioned in the book of Exodus chapter one. I like to say, as always, that there are great women behind great men. And in this story, there's no exception. <laughs> now, you may know the story about Moses and how when he was born, he was hidden in the bulrushes along the Nile because of Pharaoh's edict to kill all the newborn baby boys. But it was Pua and Shifra that was the cause of Pharaoh's great anger. So let's find out what happened before that. Okay, so let me ask you this. Have you ever been in a situation that began so great, but then something kind of happened and it changed the atmosphere around you? It may have been something that was really subtle and grew over time and you realized it, or it could have been just a one-time event that from that point on, you knew that it was going to be different. That's what happened with Pua and Shifra. And that's where they find themselves there at the beginning of Exodus before Moses is born. They're in a situation that they did not plan for. And they, of course, did not expect. So let me set, kind of set the scene for you. So even though the Israelites have been living under bitter conditions in Egypt, they had really continued to thrive and grow in numbers. And Pua and Shifra were actually the lead midwives for the Hebrew women, as well as for the Egyptian women. So their skills were sought after by both nations, both groups of people, and they were the best in their field. I imagine that they also trained other women to come along beside them and do the work. They were not only the bosses, they were kind of the icons of midwifery, if that's how you pronounce it, <laughs> right? They were the midwives of the midwives. So think about that. Wouldn't that be a great place for you to be in your industry at the top of your game and actually being recognized for it? So that's where Pua and Shifra hung out up there. But of course, life for them was not perfect. Neither of them had children of their own. In fact, it was very common for women who chose this profession to choose it for that reason, because that they entered this type of work, they could kind of feel themselves being helpful and being redeemed through helping others have children. These women knew really what it was like to sacrifice, sacrifice their time, their comfort, their resources to actually get the job done. They were really strong in their skills. And of course they were strong in their faith because hardship was a way of life for the Israelites. They saw it and matched every opportunity to do well, to do what God was calling them to do no matter what. You know, in our own businesses, we know how much time and energy it really takes to have a good business, right? God knows and he sees how hard that you and I are working. And you know, he's always giving us opportunity to trust him and to show our courage. Hmm, think about that. So Pharaoh calls 
Pua and Shifra to stand before him because he's devised this really disturbing plan to rid himself of what he calls the threat of these Hebrews. You see, it wasn't that Pharaoh thought that the Hebrews were going to rebel against him. He thought that if their numbers continued to grow, that they would be used by other nations that would want to come and conquer Egypt. They would kind of be recruited to help be against him and they would have their allegiance to these other nations because of course he was not treating them really well. So this is what he does. He's got Pua and Shifra before him and he orders them to kill the male children as they were being born. So imagine this, imagine that the most powerful man in the world the most powerful man in the country is giving you a direct order and you ignore it. Okay, their decision was easy because they feared God more than they feared Pharaoh. So they did not do what they were instructed to do. But what would be the consequences of not obeying Pharaoh? Let me ask, has there been a time in your life when you knew the right thing to do, but there were circumstances that gave you pause or caused you concern. Now, these thoughts may have crossed their minds initially. They may have left and started to discuss in private what they should do. Now, we're not exactly told how they plan to get away with not killing the babies, but we can speculate, right? We can think about what might have happened. So as leaders, they needed to have a plan that included all the other midwives that were in their organization. Imagine that business strategy meeting, you know, the whiteboards loaded up with their brainstorm ideas. Well, you know, they were probably writing it out on papyrus. <laughs> Maybe they had an email campaign that would explain the situation. Probably more like word of mouth over tea, right? And they had to create a fan base that would follow the, all of their instructions. Who was their fan base? Well, pregnant mothers, because they may have a boy, right? Really what happened was their sphere of influence suddenly encompassed the entire nation of Israel. Imagine that. Talk about having a business explosion. Everyone was listening to what they were saying and following their direction and their leadership. They were making a huge impact. Of course, they knew there would be no killing of the baby boys. Everyone was in an agreement with that. But then they also had to think about that they would no longer celebrate births or draw attention to anything like their circumcision ceremonies. Everything was kind of going to be covert from the pregnancy to the delivery to all of their ceremonies and traditions. You know, this is the first time civil disobedience is recorded. They created the resistance. I just think that's amazing. You know, your sphere of influence and impact may grow as you stand up for what is right, no matter the consequences. You know, God is really looking for you to stand up as you trust him with each step each little task that he asks you to do, then your influence and your impact grows too. What started out as something probably really small grows into connections that actually propel your business forward in miraculous ways. Now, there are consequences. This defiance of Pharaoh's orders probably goes on for a year or more before he actually realizes what is going on. Then guess what? Pua and Shifra are called before Pharaoh again. Oh, can you just imagine what was probably going through their minds that they were probably afraid for their very lives. But you know, they actually knew that this day was going to come. They couldn't hide it forever. They took the courage and they stood up for their beliefs. And I'm sure that before they were before Pharaoh, they had already discussed about what they would say, how they would talk to Pharaoh when he asked them, when he questioned them about disobeying him. So he asked them exactly that. 
why have you disobeyed? You know, they were ready to stroke his ego, so to speak, and his beliefs about the Hebrew women. Remember, he doesn't like them very much, right? So they answered things like this. They said, you know, we're sorry, Pharaoh, but the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women. They are more vigorous and they have their babies so quickly that we cannot get there in time. So basically he's saying, yes, these Hebrew women are like the animals you think they are, while your beautiful Egyptian women are flowers that need special treatment and we have to pay special attention to them. This actually satisfies him and he lets them live. Of course, Pharaoh goes on to exact another even worse edict to kill all the newborn boys. However, because of these two women and their courage, Moses is saved because of this resistance that was sparked and his parents get to save him because of that. And you know what? We cannot forget that God does reward for courage. And he rewards both of them by giving them what they wanted most, children of their own. Doing what is right is more important than doing what is expected. That is how God expects us to run our businesses as well. God has a plan for your business. And sometimes that means standing on the side that is not popular. And we have to be ready for those consequences, no matter what they may be. When you are faced with those everyday decisions, you need to know that God expects you to obey him over everything and everyone else. And he will reward your obedience by growing your sphere of influence so that you can make that bigger impact for him through your business. So what are you facing right now? How have Pua and Shifra inspired you? Let me know down in the comments. I would love to know how you want to show courage in your business and do what is right no matter what the consequences are how will you make an impact for god you know if you're looking for a way to have more courage to make a more impact with your business and to use your business to serve god then i invite you to a clarity call let's talk about what it means to have a god-centered business and to find a community of women that are ready to help you create the business that god designed for you you know i'm going to put that link down in the description so you can make that appointment so that we can chat this is denine tb I hope you found this story an inspiration for how God wants you to do business. Make sure to like this video. Let me know down in the comments how you liked the story. And don't forget to subscribe. Have a great rest of your day. And as always, be filled to overflowing.